um, that's what you might want a calculator for. So it doesn't need to be graphing. We are going to work on a process called linear programming today, and it's kind of an extension of what we did yesterday where we were solving systems of inequalities. I put pretty much all the definitions, just wrote them for you up here at the top. Um, but linear programming, a lot of times this, this kind of a situation would be used for a business to either maximize a profit or minimize a cost. So this is a legitimate thing. Okay, so it just says method for finding maximum or minimum values of some quantity, like I said, in a business application, it's usually profit or cost, um, given a set of some kind of constraints. So constraints would be like rules on your variables, which is exactly what that says right here. Constraints are th certain things your variables have to adhere to. Okay, now what we call the feasible region. This is just going to be kind of like what we did yesterday for a solution of inequalities. It's the shaded area that works for all the inequalities in the system. The inequalities in our cases here are going to be called constraints. And then what you maximize or minimize is called an objective function. You have an objective to, like I said, it maximize profit, minimize cost, depends on the question. The one thing I want to note up here at the top for you guys, though, this is not on the graph. This is not part of your constraints. So the objective function is never going to be something that you would actually graph. Okay. So these two situations on the front are not tied to like a word problem or anything. So it's just practice with the basic idea of what linear programming looks like in the coordinate plane so we can practice graphing this. So this just says graph the following constraints. And you'll see we'll have multiple constraints that we're going to graph here. And this guy up here is going to be our objective function. And they have to tell you, you guys got a question? Okay, you guys have to know from the problem if you want to maximize or minimize. For this first example, we're going to maximize this. Okay, now, the easiest constraints probably of all are going to be x is greater than 0. All right, so I'm just going to kind of highlight that on the graph. A lot of the times when you have a situation that has to do with business, you're going to have these two constraints that I have at the bottom here, which is x is greater than 0, y is greater than 0, greater than or equal to 0. What that does is that just bounds you into the first quadrant. All right, so all this, these, these two constraints just keep your entire thing in the first quadrant. So if you ever see those, I feel like almost all the time whenever you have a situation that's tied to a business question, it is always going to stay in the first quadrant because we can't sell, you know, like a negative number of items or something like that. So those two constraints just put you in the first quadrant. The other two, and these guys are both in standard form. If you can use intercepts, I would just use intercepts. So this says x plus y is less than, so we're going to have a solid line and we're going to shade below this line less than or equal to 8. If I just looked at that very first constraint that they listed, what would my x-intercept be? 8. What would your y-intercept be? Perfect. And then we're just going to play connect the dots. And somehow I did not grab myself a ruler, but that would, would be where the ruler might be helpful to you to kind of match those up. Because it appears to be all right, so we're just going to play connect the dots. We would shade below this line, but I'm going to wait on that just for a second until we get the other constraint on here. So just the best that I can. There's that line. All right, now, the next inequality, I would also argue, has some decent intercepts. I have 2x plus y. This one is also less than or equal to. So this will be a solid line, and we'll shade below, and less than or equal to 10. Okay, so if I just cover up my y, and I have 2x is less than or equal to 10, what would your x-intercept be for that second constraint? 5. five. All right, so I'm just going to put a dot at the 5. What would your y-intercept be? 10. Okay. And then we're just going to play connect the dots here. Uh, 
Okay, now to shade here. The first two constraints, I just used my highlighter to put those on. That just bounds you in the first quadrant. You are below both of the other two constraints that you got. So what we would call the feasible region here is going to be right in here. All right, so just this little quadrilateral, I'm shading in there. Now, what you need to answer the question, <laughs> it's like a cat is in here or something. <laughs> okay, now, uh, if you're going to maximize or minimize your objective function, which we're going to do here, that value is going to occur at, one of the vertices of the feasible region. So the maximum or minimum, whichever we're going to do maximum for this example, it's going to occur at one of the vertices of the feasible region. So if I asked you to tell me the vertices of the feasible region, could anybody give me an example of one of the vertices for this graph? I'm going to try and find the vertices of the feasible region. Give me an example of a point that would fit that. Jacob, what do you think? 0, 8, right up here. There's four of them. Can anybody give me another one? What is one of the vertices of the feasible region? Casey, what do you think? This one right here. Yep, this is 2, 6. There's two more. Not quite. Not quite. It's got to be like at a corner. Like a vertice is going to be at a corner. This is a quadrilateral here. Like if I had to outline this, I'm going to see a little dotted line. So it's a little quadrilateral here. Zero, zero, the origin, right? Okay, I got one more. Can you guys tell? The five, zero, that x intercept there. Okay, now here's the deal. If you want to maximize or minimize your objective function, what you're going to do, you're going to take the objective function, which they gave us up here, and I'll just rewrite it above here so you guys can see it. Um, they don't tell us what n represents. They just tell us we want to maximize this. What you actually want to do is plug in x and y for x and y and determine which one, if you're going to maximize, gives you the largest number. If you want to minimize, which one would give you the smallest number. So all I'm going to do is just plug this in for each one of these. All it means is you plug the x coordinate in for x. So for the first one, I would do 100 times 0 plus 40 times 8. For the second one, we do 100 times 2 plus 40 times 6. For the third one, 0, 0, when I plug that in, I can just do that right now, that's just going to be 0. That's not going to be our choice if we're trying to maximize. And then for the third one, we do 100 times 5 plus 40 times 0. So that last one should be 500. We're going to figure out which one gives us the maximum. So... Um, 100 times 0 is 0, 40 times 8 would be 320, and then the last one we're going to do 100 times, you can just grab your calculator if you want to do this or do it by hand, 40 times 6, that gives us 440. Now, to maximize the objective function, you just want to pick the one that gave you the biggest number. In our case, that was actually that x-intercept there. So the maximum would occur at the point 5, 0. The actual value would be 500 if they asked you for that. That's all you have to do. I know it's a little bit weird, but does anybody have a question? Okay, now we're going to try This one's a little bit different. We're going to minimize this function. So this one says C. Usually if you're looking at a word problem, that's going to be for cost. So this does not go on the graph. That's what we're going to minimize. These constraints are written a little bit interestingly. Um, how would you graph 
2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 6. It's like a compound inequality. Anybody know how you would graph that? Yeah. Perfect. Exactly. These guys are just going to be two vertical lines. Vertexel. Okay, don't forget that. X is vertical lines. There would be a solid line here at 2, and then you'd have a solid line at 6. And I'm not going to shade for the moment, but it's saying X is between those two, so it would the shading would be in between those two values. All right. And similarly, if you have Y is between... 3 and 7. So you'd have a horizontal line at 3 and a horizontal line at 7. All right, and so right now my feasible region would be this little bitty rectangle right here. All right, now our third constraint. We have x plus y less than or equal to 11. This would be a solid line and we would shade below this line. Again, I would just use intercepts. If you want to, um, this would be 11 for your x and 11 for your y. If you want to, the slope there, oh, sorry, I just turned the paper. The slope there would be negative one. You could just go down one over one all the way through if you wanted to do that. It's totally up to you. I'm just gonna use my ruler to help me here. Okay, so before I drew that diagonal line there, I was inside this little rectangle, and then I'm going to be below the diagonal line. So my feasible region, in this case, is actually going to be a pentagon. You're going to have five sides here. So I'm going to have five vertices. All right. Who can raise your hand because the maximum or minimum has to occur at one of the vertices of that feasible region. Who can just raise your hand, give me any one of the vertices. There's five of them. Jacob, you tell me one. Say that one more time. Two comma seven for sure. I'm going to just mark it on the paper here. So here's the two seven. Who can tell me another vertice of that feasible region? What'd you get? Two comma three. I'm just going to mark it on the paper as we go. All right, so I got two of them. Who could give me another one? Perfect. One right here, 6, 3. All right, I got two more. What do you think? 4, 7 is this one right here. All right, and who could tell me the last one? I got one more. Liam, what did you put for the last vertice? Um, Perfect. Excellent. Okay, so there's five in this one. So we would test these five points. And sometimes you'll get a little bit of an intuition as you go through here, kind of as you're plugging them in, which one might give you the biggest number or which one might give you the smallest number. In this case, we want to minimize. So... This, like I said, C a lot of the times in these problems will stand for cost. So it's 25 times your X value minus 10 times your Y value. And we're going to see which one gives us the smallest number. I'm just writing all these down real quick, what I'm going to plug into my calculator. And if you got a graphing calculator, I'm going to teach you a little trick real quick here, actually. Okay, so I'm going to do, for that first one, I'm going to do 25 times 2 minus 10 times 7. Right, I just, I just typed that. I'm going to hit enter, and I got negative 20. I'm going to jot that down. But let me teach you this little trick because I use this all the time. Okay, if I just type that, you can't go back and edit it, right? But if you hit second and enter just second enter. It'll bring back what you just typed and you can just edit it if you want to. So it was two and then just change this to a three. That way I don't have to type the whole thing 
over again. So I just, just right from there, I just hit second enter, and then you can just go back and change the X and Y values that you were plugging in as you need to. So I'm just after I do that, just hit second enter, and then just go back and change up any values. And then you can keep the 25 and the 10. You don't have to keep typing them every time. And then this last one gave me 100. So I'm looking to minimize this. So it's actually the very first point that we wrote down. It should be the 2, 7. This gives you the minimum. The smallest value there was negative 20. All the other values were positive. So the smallest value would occur at the vertex 2, 7. Is anybody having a question? Okay, do not get upset when I turn the paper over and you see a giant word problem, okay? Now, these are actually what these problems are usually used for. So, this is going to be tied to a situation. So, it says a furniture manufacturer can make between 30 and 60 tables a day and between 40 and 100 chairs a day. So, they're going to be giving us kind of some constraints as we look through here. So I'm just going to kind of highlight this real quick. Between 30 and 60 tables, and I'm going to grab a different color here real quick, between 40 and 100 chairs, and they need to make at least, or at most, sorry, at most, they can't make any more than, is what that means, 120 total units. So tables and chairs together, they don't, they're not able to make more than 120. It says the profit on a table is 150 the profit on a chair is 65 those two together are going to help us write our objective function that's not going to be on the graph okay it says how many tables and chairs should the manufacturer make to maximize their profit so obviously if i'm a business i would love to maximize my profit and then what will the maximum profit be and just so we all have the same graph okay i said let x be the tables and y is going to be the chairs so I'm just going to scooch this up just a tiny bit. So across the bottom, tables here, chairs here. We could switch that. Like if we just got this problem and you guys were working on it, we could switch that up and it wouldn't make a difference. It would just be our coordinates. If I asked you like how many tables, how many chairs, maybe you would look at a Y coordinate for, for tables if we set it up differently. So I'm just trying to make us all have the same graph here. All right, so I'm going to write my objective function. My objective is to maximize the profit. Can anybody tell me, I just did P for profit, what would you write as your objective function? Hayden, what do you think? Perfect. 150x, because I make 150 on every table, 65y, 65 on every chair, the profit, we'd add those together. Does anybody have a question about that? That does not go on the graph. Okay, now, I need my constraints, and there should be three of them. So I can make between 30 and 60 tables, that's a constraint, between 40 and 100 chairs, and then 120 units total. <coughs> How could I write um, that I'm going to make between 30 and 60 tables? Perfect. All right, now. If you guys want, you can actually write those as separate constraints. You could do like x is greater than or equal to 30 and then do a separate constraint x is less than or equal to 60. I love it in this format because it's just less, less work. Okay, so that's perfect. All right, if I was going to make between 40 and 100 chairs and wiser chairs, what would that look like? Jacob, what do you think? 40 is less than or equal to Perfect. Okay, now, the last one is just the fact that they, at, at most, at most, they don't have maybe enough people or enough time to make more than 120 total units. So tables and chairs together, I can't make more than 120. How could I write that as a constraint? Exactly. X plus Y less than or equal to 120. All right, so let me just come over to the graph. All right, so... Feel free to use your ruler if you want to. I'm going to use it because the lines are kind of big on this. So I'm between, I'm going to do a nice vertexal line at 30 and another nice vertexal line at 60. 
And I'm going to do a nice horizontal line at 40. And another nice horizontal line at 100. All right, now at this moment, I would be in this little rectangular region right in here. We would be between the two vertical lines, between the two horizontal lines. So the feasible region would be bounded right in there. You're going to do that diagonal line. So what are your X and Y intercepts for the diagonal line going to be? Both of them are 120. Like if you cover up the Y, X is 120. If you cover up the X, Y is 120. If you wanted to do this um, by hand, if you got Y by itself, your slope would be negative 1. And if you want to, you could just go down 1 over 1. But if you do want to use the ruler, if you line it up pretty good, you should have a good idea here. Ooh, sorry. Okay, now, I can't make any more than 120 tables and chairs together, so it's actually really similar to the last question we just grabbed. So here's my feasible region in here. And we've just got to identify the vertices, and we're going to try to maximize our profit here. Let me go through, see if we can identify the vertices of this feasible region. Bless you. And there's four of them. Okay, can anybody tell me one of the vertices? Just raise your hand and tell me, one of the vertices. What do you think? 30, 90. Oh, I can't write. 30, 90. That would be this point right here. What is another vertice of the feasible region that we're going to use? 30, 40. Yes, ma'am. This one right here is 30, 40. Okay, I got two more. What other vertices do we have for our feasible region? What do you think? Yes, ma'am. 60, 40. And who can tell me the very last one? Hayden, would you put? Yes. 60, 60. Okay, now, like I mentioned to you guys on the front, if you're going to maximize, we're going to maximize this guy that we wrote up here. So this is going to give me my profit. You can kind of get an idea. Maybe it wouldn't be useful for your time to plug all of these in because you know for a fact. Like, obviously, if I look at the first two points, right? I know the one with the 90 chairs is definitely automatically going to give me more than the 30, 40 because I'm going to plug in 90 instead of 40. So you might be able to figure that out. Same, same argument here. I might just automatically know 60 has to give me a bigger profit than if I make 40. They have the same X coordinate. So you don't have to go through and test all the points if you want to think through that. Because um, I know if it, if it was me doing this problem, I would just test this one here and this one here. You can test all of them if you want to, but I know this one has to give me more of a profit and this one has to give me more of a profit if they have the same X coordinate, different Y coordinate. You're gonna plug these into the 150 times the X value plus the 65 times the Y value. If you wanna test all of them for sure, I don't know why I just wrote 30, this is 60, um, bless you. If you wanna test all of them, you totally can, but I would, I would also take an argument for you to say like, hey, this is 90, this is 40, this one has to be bigger, or this one's 60, this one's 40 for the Y coordinate, X coordinates are the same, bless you. So those are the only two I would test, but that's just me. So if you wanna test all of them, for sure you can. All right, this first one is gonna give you profit 10,350. The other one going to give you a profit 12,900. So clearly I want to use this last option because that gives me the maximum profit. Is anybody having a question? Yes. 